All right, what's going on, everybody? This is your professor, Dr. Jace K. Austin, and welcome to week six. That is right, week number six of your 7314 class, which is your reference and user services class. Today, we are going to do a little bit of housekeeping, and then after we do that housekeeping, we are going to do the second part of that business sheet that we started in week four. So I do understand that uh, a lot of you were a little confused by the video last week, and I apologize for that. Um, but I guess what I want to encourage you all to do is just to not overcomplicate it. It really, um, really the main thing is be there at the same time. So once your partner who's playing the librarian is logged in as the librarian in question point, if you click that link uh, from the Easy Breezy instructions, you should be able to meet your partner in real time so long as they are, again, logged into question point. So, um, and I have some emails that I'm going to respond to tomorrow, which will be Wednesday. And most of you will just uh, be seeing this on Wednesday or later, because even though I record them on uh, Monday or Tuesday, it is Tuesday night and it is Tuesday night at about 11 o'clock. So a lot of you are probably already asleep and that's OK, but you can catch up a little later. Now, here's the main thing that I need to do as far as housekeeping, because I'm trying to get you all on the right track, trying to make sure you are prepared for success, both through the rest of your careers here at Sisselt and then beyond for the rest of your careers until you retire. You all are in graduate school, and so there are some expectations that I have, and I'm just going to relay those expectations now. So, I am almost done grading the uh, virtual reference, um, I'm sorry, not the virtual reference paper in practice, your first thing, which was your reference interaction report, that was your first written assignment. I am almost done grading those. And so far, I've had half of you do bibliographies and I've had half of you not do bibliographies. And when we're working with APA, which is what you're working with in this class, really your bibliography is called your references. That is how they are referred to in APA style. But uh, yeah, again, half of you did them and half of you didn't. So here's a good rule of thumb. The um, when you are in graduate school, if you are citing outside sources for an essay style assignment, you should probably assume that you are going to need to do a references page or a work cited or a bibliography page um, or a listing, uh, depending on what style you're using. And again, when you're using APA, you're going to refer to it as references. Um, and I do just want to show you the assignment prompt here. So let's pull up this assignment prompt. Okay, so references to readings. So there is actually a caveat in your rubric that says that you will be referring to your readings when writing this. So I just do, again, need to reiterate that when you are doing references, then you should have a references list. Again, you're in grad school. Now you are training to be scholars in your field. And as scholars in your field, you are going to need to have your citations uh, on point in order to build upon existing scholarship or to use existing scholarship and existing sources to make your point better heard, I should say. So yeah, there, I get it. There's no explicit, you need to have a references page here, but uh, that can get very ticky tack. I mean, technically this does not say you have to write the paper in English, but again, that's what I am expecting. And I did not take off a lot of points for those of you who 
did not include the references page. Um, really, I counted that as meets expectations as opposed to exceeds expectations. But it's going to be below expectations from now on. So with your reference, uh, your virtual reference practice and paper assignment, if you've already turned that in and hopefully I'm actually hoping that no one's turned that in yet, but you know, you can work ahead if you want. And if you have already turned that in, but you did not include a references page, go ahead because you still have time. Uh, that assignment is not due until, let me see when the due date is so I don't say the wrong thing. Okay, so that assignment is going to be due on March 8th, so it is coming up. Um, I think that is a week from this coming Sunday. Yes, again, you need to have a references page. You need to do in-text citations well, so forth and so on. This does say consult the APA style guide. So when you see that, again, that should be a hint that you should be referring to the readings, incorporating readings, incorporating outside sources, and referencing them both in the in-text citations as well as making a works cited page. I do not want anyone to lose any more points for the rest of the semester due to not having a references page. And again, I went very easy on you this time. So if you got like a 4.75 out of 5, that's the equivalent of getting a 95, which is an A. So you still could get an A even without the references list. And believe me when I tell you, there are some instructors here in Sicil who would not have been that kind. I know I probably seem like a uh, like a taskmaster professor, but believe me, I am not. A lot of students kind of start out with me and then they uh, they get other people and then they realize that I wasn't as bad as they originally thought. But anyway, so yes, have a references page or a references list at least for the rest of your essay style assignments in Sizzled. And that would include the Wikipedia edit page, uh, the Wikipedia edit assignment as well. I'm not gonna make you do a references list for the LibGuide assignment. And then with the semester long project, Again, that's not really an essay style sort of assignment. That is more of a question and answer type assignment. Um, so I do want your, I do want to know where you got your information from and how you answered the questions with uh, the semester long project. But I'm not going to be counting this for APA style and a references list and everything. That's just overkill. So if you've already started on the semester long project, and I know several of you have, and good for you for being proactive, um, do not worry, okay? Uh, do, not act, do not feel that you have to go back and include references or anything on the semester long project that are APA formatted. But for your essay style papers, yes, you'll be doing that. OK, now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and finish our little sheet. All right, so this is our sheet here. And again, we're just doing a little bit of practice with the uh, business resources. And if you would like to if you would like to do this on your own, and if you would like to see the first half of this, first of all, the first half of this was in the week four check in video. So you would need to go back to that in order to see the first half of this. And that will also tell you where to download this sheet. But we are going to pick up, pick up, sorry, where we left off two weeks ago. And so we are doing Revlon and we are trying to fill out the second half of this sheet. So uh, the first thing is first, find an industry report in Business Source Complete or Business Insights Global uh, and an industry survey in Standard & Poor Net Advantage. Which industry report is a better fit for your company's industry and why? Now, what we're going to do, I am actually just going to find an industry report 
in uh, Business Source Complete. Uh, we're not going to mess with Net Advantage right now. Uh, there's just no need. <laughs> and but you'll see what you can get from uh, Business Source Complete when I do this. Hopefully, you will kind of like or appreciate what you see. So first of all, what we should do is get a primary NAICS code and this is very emergent heavy I'm noticing. Uh, so I apologize for that. There's so many great resources that you actually don't need emergent for. So I apologize for that, but we are leaving emergent a little bit here. So Man, this is actually way too margin heavy, but uh, let's go ahead and do this. I see that they actually removed some questions, so that burns my biscuits a little bit. One question that this thing used to ask you is to find a beta and find out what that means. So a beta, you can find that on Yahoo Finance, or at least you used to be able to. Maybe they remove the question because you no longer can. So we are going to find that out in a few minutes. This is way too emergent heavy. So I guess what I'm going to need to do is maybe make a training worksheet of my own that can get you exploring things. But your semester long project is also uh, going to be useful for just discovering and exploring different sources. Oh, said Redline, thank you. Okay, so we're just gonna use this next code here. So we're in the industry of cosmetics, beauty supplies, and perfume stores. I'm gonna copy this one here. And what was our question again? It was, what is the primary next code? We're gonna throw that in there. Ugh. Okay, Ugh. bada bing. But we are also going to throw this. So a NAICS code deals with industry, as you can see here. NAICS codes deal with industry. SIC codes do as well. I prefer NAICS codes. Um, and you're a librarian, so if you want to know about more, if you want to know more about NAICS codes, what they are, all that stuff, look it up. But so when we go to, I'm going to go back to the library homepage, and I'm going to get into Business Source Complete or Business Source Premier, which they are pretty much the same database. Complete just has more stuff in it. And I can't remember which one the zoo has, but let's see. Okay, so they have Business Source Premier, not Business Source Complete. But that is okay. All right, so if you ever need anything like an industry report or a SWOT analysis or anything like that, Business Source Complete is great for SWOT analyses. And so that's something that you probably don't want to forget. Um, industry reports, you can also get those in Ibis World. Ibis World is really, really good for that. I think I mentioned that the last time that we were together on this worksheet, which was week four, because in week five, we looked at question point. Now, what I'm going to do is when we first get into Business Force Premier, in this advanced search, we can actually change this to a NAICS code. Then we can put our NAICS code number in. Bada bing. So these 44,000 results that you see here are dealing with the NAICS code that Revlon, Revlon's primary NAICS code, according to Mergent Online. Now, companies do tend to have more than one NAICS code. So Again, this thing is saying find an industry report. So I'm just going to show you how to find an industry report here. And I'm just going to let you know, spoiler alert, a lot of the times what you find in Business Source Complete is going to be better, at least for at least for business students at, at the undergraduate level. Uh, what you find in Business Source Complete is a lot of times better than what you see in Standard & Poor Net Advantage. So what we're going to do now is go to source types and see if we can get industry reports may also be referred to as industry profiles. So what we can do, and I'll do that again in case I did that too fast, you can come over here to the left and go to source types, go to show more, hit industry profiles, hit update. 
bada bing. So we get here in market line, they are one of the top dogs in the whole industry profile thing. Now, as you can see, we've got a lot of international stuff actually going on here. So we've got things from Japan, Italy, India, Europe, fragrances global, Australia, Mexico, United States. Okay, so I honestly don't know if Revlon makes male products, but that's what's showing up uh, in the this this particular industry profile showed up with this Nate's code. So that doesn't necessarily mean that pardon me here. That doesn't necessarily mean that uh, Revlon is going to be involved, but this is still Revlon's Nate's code area. So let's see. Let's see if they're even mentioned does not look like it so yeah but this is an industry report here and you see all that and what I'm gonna do really quickly is just do another search in case you want something that is an industry report but that also mentions Nate's code I mean that can that also mentions your company uh, you can kind of find that too so we can make another field here go to company entity and we can put Revlon in and see if anything pops up. Okay. And you've actually got a company profile, which is good as well as a SWOT analysis and a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis. And this one's pretty recent from May, 2019. So that's going to be a good one. But if you're looking for the industry profiles, again, come back over here to the left check that box bada bing these things should actually have some mention of revlon in them now do we have one I'm not even going to look for one specific to the united states but we've definitely got a global one and revlon is a global player okay so and then you can do the control f and as you can see Revlon has some mentions. In fact, if you can see this, Revlon appears to have 57 entries. So there you go. I would say that if you are looking for an industry report or an industry profile, Business Source Complete is where you want to start. Okay. According to the industry report selected at 12, what are two major trends? Uh, and then you can just kind of control F to find that um, market analysis. You'll find your trends a lot of times in market analysis. And again, the good thing to do a lot of times is to do a control F and find the keyword that you're looking for within the report. So you could find trends that way. And it's more than likely, like I said, that within, I'm not going to take the time because I can't make this video too long, but you probably have things that work as trends within this section of this report here. Okay, uh, so we're going to skip down there. Again, this is getting to be a little too mergent heavy, and I don't know why that's the case, but we're going to go back to mergent to find our closest competitors. So, merge it, merge it, merge it. Okay. We're going to go back for Revlon. It's trying. Hopefully this video will be under 40 minutes, but remember, you can speed me up. OK, so when you are looking for competitor information, you would go to this competitors tab. All right, and here's where we would find our closest competitors. What you would want to do is look at revenues and see which dollar amounts are going to be the closest to Revlon. And it looks like Revlon is uh, listed twice under two entities here. Some of these numbers are different, but some of these numbers are the same. So you can see with revenues, they're the same. 
but with total assets, for instance, you have some differences. So that's something that you have to keep an eye on. But our closest competitors would definitely be Sally and uh, I would say that, well, definitely Sally, that's number one. Uh, and then we would probably just kind of have to So you've got Sally. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time bothering with math here. It does look like ELF is going to be one. Um, to get the idea. So I'm going to put sharing services as well as one. numbers four and five. I'm going to do Cody again. Um, you get the idea that my math might be off, but when you're actually doing this for someone, make sure you're doing it right. And whatever, we're going to just put, uh, we're going to put that L brands in whatever that'll be our last one okay now i'm only going to do because you see how competitor you will see how competitors work once i do this for revlon itself so just for again the sake of being brief i'm not going to do the closest competitor i'm just going to do revlon here but to get to our ratios again we're going to stay emergent man this is getting very emergent heavy whoops and I mean details, I meant financials. So we'll go to the company financials tab and then we'll go to ratios. And you will see these various ratios here. And unfortunately it looks like the latest thing we've got is 2018. We haven't gotten our 2019 data yet. Uh, it's coming, it's just not there yet. Current ratio, you see here 1.07. So we stick that up in the mail. Uh, whatever. Okay, there you go. A uh, quick ratio, I guess I shouldn't be copying and pasting. So 0.46. Inventory turnover. You got 2.9. I mean 2.19. Interest coverage. Doesn't look like we've got a listing here. So in a that'll happen sometimes, but hopefully not too often. Total debt to equity, we would uh I don't even know how to imprint that value. I don't know what that means. Uh, but we're just gonna put it because that's what margin has given us. You can only do what the database allows you to. Uh, return on investment, that might be negative, so 3.18. I don't know if it's negative, if it's in, it's in there. But I copy it or write it the exact way that they do, and then return on, invest on assets, uh, 9.69. 9.69, boom. So, and then you would just get the competitor's information the same way. Uh, find a market share report. Uh, yes, Business Insights, whether it's Business Insights Global or Business Insights Essentials, is how you are going to want to find your market share. Oh, God. So I don't have. Oh. 
Okay. Um, I don't have Business Insights Global or Business Insights Essential for Mizzou, and I think we used to have it. I hope I'm not getting confused. One moment while I pause. All right, so I apologize for the pause. Now, just because Mizzou does not have Business Insights Global doesn't mean that your public library won't. So I'm using Mid-Continent Public Library. That's one of the local public libraries I use. And we'll pull up a market share report this way. All right, so this is Business Insights Global. And what is that? Ooh, that is not my next code. Okay, so my next code, let me grab it back again. Copy. Bada bing. get some results here all right so we got this now what you can do is you can go to market share reports here and we're just gonna probably jump on the first one we find for the sake of time actually these are kind of terrible um okay that's better so we have to scroll down a little bit, but this is the one we want right here. And this is very interesting. So Revlon does not make enough apparently, and I don't know how this is, <laughs> but Revlon for 2019 did not get its own bar here. Uh, so Sally, L Brand, Sephora, and Ulta they all got their theirs, but Revlon is within this other. So their market share is going to be among or within the 34%. And yes, that is a little odd. If we were doing Sally, then you could answer this question a little easier. Your market share would be 6.9. So this means that of all the sales, Sally accounts for 6.9% of total sales within this industry. That's their market share. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm very surprised that Revlon didn't get its own line. But that's just how the system works sometimes. So uh, what is market share and how is it calculated, by the way? Again, remember I told you about that website, Quick MBA, and they should have a market share entry. Okay. So if you want to know what market share is and how it's calculated, this will tell you. This gives you a very comprehensive and easy to understand breakdown of what market share is. And how it's calculated, market share would be the firm's sales divided by the total market sales. Okay. All right. So right here, again, just in the interest of time, and I'm sorry if it seems lazy, but I'm just doing this in the interest of time because y'all don't want to watch an hour long video. All right. Uh, how is it calculated? I'm just going to copy and paste this. At least I think I'm going to do that, but I'm not because you can't highlight it. So market share equals firm sales divided by total market sales. And this is according to quickmba.com. All right. What markets does your company compete in? One of them is going to be, oh, okay, one of them is going to be leading cosmetics, beauty, and fragrance retailers. So that is one of the 
markets that Revlon will compete in. Find your company's page on Value Line or Yahoo Finance. What is the company's financial strength or recommendation rating? So let's now go to, and this is not a paid database. So Yahoo Finance, you can just put in finance.yahoo.com, bada bing, you'll be brought here. And then put in your ticker symbol or the company name, you will be able to pull up an overview page. Okay, now what were we asked again? What we were asked was recommendation rating. So, actually, let me pause while I actually find that figure. All right, I appreciate you holding. And what we want to do when we're looking at recommendations, um, it looks like Yahoo has updated this from simple current recommendations to recommendation trends. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe it was always trending with uh, historical months listed. I think that that is actually new. So we can go to Anna to analysis, and they're always updating these databases, guys. So, uh, yeah, there are going to be times when I'm seeing new stuff right with you. But, yeah, if you go to the analysis tab, then you're going to scroll down to recommendation trends. And it looks like they are steady on hold and have been for the past few months. So they're not a strong buy. They're not a sell. Uh, they're... They are on a hold. So if you've got some Revlon stock, Yahoo recommends that you hold it right now. Um, and so we are going to, first of all, we'll answer this question is unknown. Um, but what is the company's financial strength or recommendation rating? Right now it's hold. And then use Wall Street Journal articles tab to guide to find this article. Uh, mm, we're going to do a newspaper section and we're already over 30 minutes. I'm going to do a newspaper video, so I'm not going to do the Wall Street Journal thing for right now. But uh, let's just look again at Yahoo very, very quickly uh, looking at this summary. So again, you've got a lot of good information here, including historical performances, and you can go into historical data and find even more um, you've got a beta rating here as well as other ratios, uh, previous closings, openings of the day, and all these various things. So we need to hang this video up because we are at 30 minutes. Therefore, I am going to bid y'all adieu until next week. Next week, we will try to jump into something else, and it might be something a little shorter since you just got hit with back-to-back 30-minute -back videos in week four and week six. So that's not really back-to-back. -back. It's more like back-to-side, to back again. But anyhow, that is how we are going to do, and that's how we're going to end today. I, again, am Dr. Jace. Peace and grace. I am out.